For a while, I wasn't sure whether I actually wanted to post this video because I felt like it was woefully inadequate and I hadn't covered the million things I wanted to discuss, but then I thought about it logically. If I covered every single thing I wanted you to know, this video would be like a hundred hours long and would cover everything I've ever talked about on this channel. So just a heads up, this isn't going to be literally every single thing you need to know, but it will teach you all of the most essential basics. Pearson Plus is an online textbook platform that makes studying simpler and more convenient. First of all, it's an online textbook platform, so it gives you access to over 1,500 e-texts. Additionally, you can use a note-taking interface alongside your books to add notes and highlights. And in a step up from physical textbooks, you can also use a search function to look for the information that you need. To make good use of a study method that I mentioned in this video, you can create your own flashcards in the platform or you can use their ready-made flashcards if you'd like to save a bit of time. The app truly has all of the essential study tools all in one place. And another like less essential but still very useful feature, there are audio versions of textbooks. This can allow you to squeeze in just a little bit of studying when you're commuting or doing chores or some other task like that. Pearson Plus can be used on mobile devices and laptops and you can get offline access to your textbooks too in case your wi-fi goes out or data is just like not cooperating with you again serving yet another benefit over physical textbooks because instead of lugging around a heavy block of pages you can take your ipad or laptop or whatever device that will already be handy with you plus you can pick up where you left off if you have pearson plus on multiple devices just depending again on what you conveniently have with you the subscription cost starts at 9.99 per month and it's a monthly pay-as-you-go model unlike rental books which have a pretty long contract time or like literally spending a lump sum of several hundred dollars on an actual physical textbook. So if that all sounds good to you and you want to add Pearson Plus to your arsenal of study tools, visit the link in the description to check it out. Thank you Pearson Plus for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the advice. be a straight A student, you don't have to be a super genius and you don't have to give up anything fun ever in order to study for like 10 hours a day. And why do I know this? Because I have been a straight A student for my entire educational career thus far and I have a lot of friends and acquaintances who are also very successful 4.0 students. And besides having all this personal experience seeing what successful students do in order to succeed, um, I've also been running this YouTube channel about learning and study tips for like five years. So I've done a lot of research and I think I know what I'm talking about. So let's just get right into it. The secret of it all, the Krabby Patty sauce, the magic ingredient is that there is no secret. Like I guess if I had to assign like a magical formula for getting an A, it would be know what you're doing at least 90% of the time. The way that grades and tests and all that work is that people who are not you have come up with a lot of elaborate ways to try to figure out what's inside your brain, to try to figure out whether you have in fact mastered all of the information you need to know. So the best way to get good grades is to actually have a mastery of the material. That way, even if there's a little bit of range and error of how good the tests are at evaluating your abilities, you should pretty consistently show up as knowing the material because you do know the material. How do you do that? Again, there isn't really a magic secret that will get you there with no effort at all. You just have to put in the work, you have to study so that you know what you're doing. Of course, it's not always as easy as that and there are a few ways you can like finesse the system to show up as a higher level of mastery than you probably actually have. And I'll talk about that later too, but studying is what this video is mostly going to be about. And it's also a lot of what this channel is about. So if you've been a long time viewer, this might feel kind of basic and redundant. But for those who are newer to these ideas, I kind of just want this video to be a good basic primer on not just study methods, but the most effective and efficient study methods. Let's start with what I think are the three most fundamental essential study methods. Now, even if you don't use the specific methods that I talk about right now, what we want in the most efficient studying methods is one, we want active learning and active recall. 
what you want to practice is just pulling the information out of your brain, not just looking at it on a page and being able to recognize like, yeah, I think I've seen these words before, which is what you're practicing if you're simply rereading your notes or textbook. Because what do you do on a test? You don't just look at a page and think, oh, I've seen that before. Yep, we're good. You actually have to literally pull knowledge out of nowhere, or I guess out of your brain and put it onto an empty page. So in our study methods, you know, we wanna work on a skill that we actually need to have. And because active recall will get you faster results, we also don't want to be wasting time on fluff, which is the easier stuff that you definitely already know and have committed to memory. Your goal in getting, you know, the above 90% needed for an A is to know above 90% of the things. And if you're missing like 20% of the knowledge, you want to target that part and fix what actually needs fixing instead of like trying to oil a wheel that's already functioning perfectly. So what that means is avoid the fluff and instead focus on the hard stuff. Focusing on the hard stuff might be prioritizing certain classes. Like I definitely put a lot more effort into AP calculus than like regular level English and it might be focusing on the harder material within each class. And now here are the actual study methods you probably want me to talk about. So the first one I recommend is flashcards, especially when you can use them in a spaced repetition system. So of course, this is an active recall method because hopefully what you're doing is putting a question or a vocabulary word on the front, and then you have to, you know, Think of it in your head before you flip it over and check whether you got the right answer. Additionally, what a spaced repetition system does is it takes advantage of this model called the curve of forgetting. I don't want to go like too in depth with this. I do have more videos about this topic. Basically, the way these technologies work is they'll bring the card back to you based on, you know, how long ago you added it in when you first learned it maybe how many times you've gotten it right or gotten it wrong in the past. I don't really know all the fancy calculations behind it, I'm going to be honest, but basically it figures out when you're most at risk of forgetting the information and it brings it back right before that's about to happen, which is the point at which you actually should review it instead of like constantly reviewing words you completely don't remember the meaning of or constantly reviewing words that you already have memorized. The next study method is practice tests, which just like flashcards is an active recall method. Not only do you practice recalling information from the stuff that you do know, the stuff you don't know, your mistakes will help you identify what you need to study more, you know, helping you identify the hard stuff that you need to work on fixing. And the ways that you put together these practice tests also have different pros and cons that can add to your studying methods. One is to write your own questions. This can be helpful because it forces you to review all of the information in depth and actually look for all the specific details. A second option is to find questions in your textbook or the internet or some other outside resource. And this might be great because it forces you to examine information that you might have even forgotten you were supposed to know about. But the con is that maybe it'll remind you of something you actually never even learned and you didn't have to know for your class. Although, you know, it doesn't hurt to be extra informed. And the ultimate best case scenario for the study method is to find old tests from the same class, because this like pretty much guarantees that it will be relevant material to what you actually need to know. And some teachers might reuse their questions. My poli -sci professor in spring quarter definitely just reused a bunch of old test questions. So check if you have those available to you. And the last thing to make a habit of doing in your study routine is clarifying your misunderstandings. This just means like figuring out what the heck is going on for the stuff that you didn't get. Maybe the things you got wrong in your practice tests or during your flashcard practice. The first two methods I just discussed are about like, how the heck do you memorize things? But you also want to make sure that you're not memorizing incorrect things. So this is where clarifying misunderstanding needs to be a regular part of your study practice. I don't really recommend reading your textbooks and notes in their entirety as a studying method because it's very passive, but if you want to go in and hunt for specific details and information about a topic that you don't fully understand, that can be a great resource. Some other resources to check out might be books that are not assigned by your class but are about the same subject, the internet of course, make sure you check your sources to make sure it's legitimate information, and asking for help from your teacher or from a tutor. Next, let's talk about time management, because as a student, you have a lot of classes to juggle, a lot of extra things to take care of, and time is a very limited, valuable resource. Tip one, prioritize. But I'm sure you've heard that everywhere. Like, what the heck does that even mean? 
As I mentioned earlier, everyone has a fairly limited amount of time in the day and you reasonably might not be able to finish everything on your to-do list. So what you wanna do is finish the most priority tasks first. That way, if you run out of time, it won't be the most important stuff that gets tossed aside. And how you decide what's important is, you know, kind of up to individual interpretation of like what is important to you. Um, but normally you want to prioritize the things that are essential to get done and the things that are the most urgent. The whole essential part might not be as relevant because like, I feel like when I was in high school, like everything was essential. I had to do every single homework assignment. Otherwise like, why would I just give up free points? In this case, I would still recommend doing the hardest things first and the most essential work intensive things first because your brain has the most energy and will be at its sharpest, best condition at that point. And then later you can kind of rush through and sloppily do the stuff that like isn't really that important. Not that I think it's good to do things sloppily and badly, but like sometimes it's a necessity, you know? One thing though to be careful of as far as prioritizing urgency is to not let long-term projects just fall to the wayside and then inevitably you'll have to do them last minute. Instead, to avoid this problem, I would set some interim deadlines that you do treat as like urgent when they're coming up. For example, maybe you have five weeks to finish a paper that's 10 pages long, so you just write two pages every single week and there you go. Those are interim deadlines. Next, don't forget that every minute counts. If you've ever had to finish your homework during the lunch period before the class starts, you know how much work can get done in 15 minutes. Granted, I don't think you should be finishing everything at the sort of frenzied and sloppy pace of a lunchtime homework completion, but you know, it's easy to look at a shorter period of free time and decide like, oh, this is wasted time. I'm just going to sit here and scroll on my phone. But by choosing to do that, you are the one choosing to waste it. If you've got 10 minutes of waiting between two classes or half an hour of waiting for the bus, that's time when you can get things done. Squeezing study time in whenever I possibly could was how I got myself through my crazy high school extracurricular schedule. And lastly, make sure you get your plans out of your head onto something, whether that be a paper planner or a digital calendar. I like to use Google Calendar for everything, maybe like a bullet journal. There are so many methods and I have a playlist on my channel called Planning and Organization, which will give you some ideas and options of how to organize your life. Your brain is very, very strong, very good at remembering things, but it's pretty much impossible that it will remember everything. and. Even remembering 99% of things can still be disastrous. It just takes one project that you completely forgot existed or one test that you forgot to study for to kind of bring down your average and prevent you from ever reaching an A again. So don't let that happen. Store things on paper or a computer that will never forget in order to make sure that you never forget and that you get everything done that you need to get done. Gray sky, hello blue. Last but not least, the part you were probably expecting this whole video to be, um, but this is the hacks section. The thing about these like grade hacks is that they're really not that miraculous. You do have to be like within range of knowing what you're doing in order for these hacks to actually be useful. My first tip is to make friends with your teacher or your TA or whoever is doing your grading. I know this kind of does come off a little bit manipulative. Like you do want to like just make friends with them because they're generally nice people who have a lot of knowledge about their subject matter, but it can also help you with grades in some cases, I'm not gonna lie. And a couple ways to do this might be visiting them in office hours or like tutorial periods or whatever it's called in your class and asking them for help when you need it and just being a respectful, diligent student while you're in their class. I mean, like, don't be a suck up. Nobody likes that, but you do want to just like be a respectful and kind person because you know, your teachers are humans too. And in turn, they'll probably be a little bit more sympathetic towards you, whether that be in grading your work or slight transgressions or even bumping up your grade if you're in a borderline case at the end of the semester. Find and use old class materials whenever you can, whether that be tests, quizzes, homework, whatever. Not in like a cheating way, but using it as a study reference material. A lot of teachers will reuse test questions or at least the style of the questions. So getting those old tests can you know, help you identify maybe what you wanna study for and what question styles you want to prepare for. And it can just kind of like soothe your anxiety a little bit so you know what 
to expect. Now, of course, you don't have to have this. Like if you're incredibly knowledgeable about the material, you will probably do well on the test, even if it doesn't completely align with your strengths and weaknesses. But if you don't feel like you're able to get up to that point at this moment, finding that old material can help you tailor what you're strongest in to what will most likely be on the assessment. To find this stuff, um, don't try to like subvert rules. Like if some professors don't want their old tests out there, just like respect that, I guess. But some universities have things called test banks, which, you know, are just like a bank full of old tests. You can also ask previous students who have taken the same course with the same teacher. And this is really easy for standardized testing like APs and SATs because free tests are available on the College Board website. And last but not least, you want to improve at speed reading and writing quickly. I feel like half the challenge on a test is just managing your time so that you have enough time to thoroughly and diligently answer all of the test questions and then go back and double check your work. And the thing is, I feel like I have a huge advantage in this because just throughout my life I've been a reader so I'm quite fast at reading, significantly faster than the average person. Just watch my taking the LSAT video as a non-law student thing to like see evidence of how quickly I can get through tests because of this. So this allows me to finish everything quickly while still like actually understanding everything of course. And being able to read faster is not something I'm like very knowledgeable about instructing people how to do. I think it helps a lot to just practice and reading more, being well read will give you more knowledge generally and improve your writing skills. And then writing faster just means writing as fast as you possibly can while maintaining legibility. Usually this just means writing messier, but not so messy that it's like impossible to understand. All right, so that's like pretty much everything. I think I've covered the absolute basics of what you need to do to be a straight A student. And the hard part about this all is not listening to me talk for 15 minutes, but actually going out and doing it. And I can't do this for you. No one else can do this for you besides yourself. You have to find within you the discipline to go out there and actually study. So hop to it, I guess. And I want to remind you, don't worry too much about having the perfect studying methods and the absolute most optimized test taking hacks because you can always learn more about studying to further optimize your routine. But I think it's better if you get started now with perhaps a little bit more of a basic imperfect routine but that'll be infinitely better than constantly trying to research to get the perfect routine and never getting started at all. Um, just do it, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm not a motivational speaker, but I hope this video was motivational and helpful to you. Good luck with everything this school year. It's gonna be an odd one, returning to in-person learning after a pandemic, or I guess maybe you're not, I don't know. Let me know what's going on for you this back to school season. I hope you enjoyed this video. I upload new videos on this channel about student life and you can visit my Instagram, TikTok, and second channel for some other sporadic random content. See you next time.